Hey everyone, it's Brett and Josh here with the Tuning School, and on this Tech Tuesday, we're gonna be talking about street tuning, dyno tuning, the differences between the two, and which is better in certain situations. Today's Tech Tuesday is gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna see a prompt on the screen, and we have to decide whether we think it's street tuning or dyno tuning. Let's get started. Dyno tuning. Dyno tuning. I think that when it comes down to the difference between the street and the dyno, it's pretty clear that the dyno is the safest because you don't have to deal with traffic or the car braking or running into a wall or anything like that, right? Yeah, you're also not dealing with if there's a mechanical issue and you're broken down on the side of the road, you have to have someone come pick you up. So yes, dyno tuning is the safest way to tune your car. Heaven forbid, you know, engines do break sometimes. So if an engine did yes. break while tuning, usually not by the fault of the tuner, if it breaks from you know being strenuous on it and whatnot, it would be annoying to be in the middle of nowhere stuck out there. Where if you're at your shop, you have all your tools, it's right there in the dyno. Or hopefully a technician that's ready to work on it. That would be helpful <laughs> as well. I think it's both. So when it comes down to accurately tuning, you're actually using the dyno as a rolling road, which as we just discussed is safer. Um, but you're also getting accurized numbers, so you can get horsepower and torque figures, then you always follow it up with a street tune to make sure your drivability is good. That's true, I didn't think about it in the sense of accurate numbers. Normally, it depends on the type of dyno you have though too. If you've got just an inertia-based dyno, that's just the weight of the roller, a lot of times those tunes will be slightly off from the street, especially if you're dealing with like turbocharged applications and stuff like that. Um, loaded dynos obviously get much closer. It's what we recommend all of our customers buy is you need to have a loaded dyno to tune effectively, but there's still a lot of inertia ones out there. In my opinion, I think street tuning can be more accurate because you're tuning the vehicle for the environment it's gonna operate in. So at the end of the day, if you actually put the vehicle in the environment it's gonna go day to day, then that's gonna be the most accurate way to tune it, but you're not gonna get the power numbers like you said. Agree to disagree. It, it depends, I mean, least expensive way. The street's obviously cheaper because you're not incurring the cost of the dyno, but if you broke a car or hit another car on the street, then it would become expensive. So it's a catch-22. So naturally, upfront cost, street tuning is cheaper, and it's the way most people start because dynos can be expensive. They're actually cheaper than most people would think, though. Um, you can get into one for a pretty good price, you know, some of those smaller models and things like that, but it's still cheaper to just go right to your local street and start tuning. That's actually an opinion I didn't think about. Um, how valuable is your license to you? Do you like to drive on the street? Does your wife like to have you drive <laughs> instead of have uh, herself drive around everywhere? Um, a lot of those things play a factor. How much is the car that you're racing on the street or tuning on the street worth? So yeah, I could definitely see where a dyno might also be a cost-effective way. Yeah, definitely dyno's more cost-effective up front, but if you broke something on the street, then it would be more cost, you know, least cost-effective on the back end, so it just depends either way. But street tuning's obviously, I would say, we can vote that's probably cheaper, at least to get started. Agreed. Kind of both. So legally, you can tune on a dyno at your shop as long as you want. Obviously you have noise ordinances if you live next to a group of houses or what have you. But also another way that you can street tune, street tune effectively, is to take it to the track. And that's what we recommend over street tuning, is actually going to your local track on a Friday or Saturday test and tune, registering, entering, and then you can dial in wide open throttle at the quarter mile. Yeah, normally it's pretty easy to get all of your idle and park throttle stuff done, just normal street driving, because that's what that stuff requires. But when it comes to wide open, the racetrack, you know, drag strip is an ideal place to do that. But yeah, it was interesting you said that about the dyno. I know you had issues before where you had <laughs> noise ordinance problems. And it depends very much on where your shop's at. You know, is your dyno in your garage? Is it in an industrial park? Is yes. it in a business park where there's just normal office buildings? And so when it comes down to legality, at some point, you know, dynos can run into some issues there, but you can go whatever speed you want on a dyno, and I think that's kind of more the point, is you're not gonna get a ticket while on your dyno for speeding. For a noise, that would be different, but yeah, it's a, it could go either way. Dyno, right? Dino. So dyno makes sense for this one because you have a very 
standard test procedure you can perform. Obviously, dyno has its own test functions. It can perform, it can do different loads in the cars and things like that, but you can do the same throttle position, the same RPM, the same gear every single time. If you're on a busy street, or even just a, even not a busy street, even a back road or something like that, it can be hard to replicate that same test every single time because it's always a little bit different conditions-wise and stuff like that. There's a deer in front of you this time versus last time, things like that. Yeah. So I would say the dyno is definitely the most repeatable. I would I would tend to agree. I think that with tests like Mustang Dyno, they have a vehicle simulation, so it loads it up according to the vehicle's weight, uh, airspeed, restriction, stuff like that, as well as their pro test. It allows you to do it as a safe, repeatable process, just like our tuning courses. Exactly, so it works out perfect for our tuning courses where it has you do specific tests. So exactly. That works really good. It's actually both. Okay. I think it's both because where I come from in Houston, there's a dyno shop a football throw away uh, from each other. I don't know how it is in Tampa, where you guys have a Swiss cheese of lakes in between your geographical mass, yeah. but in Houston, whether you own the shop or whether there's a shop in your area, it's usually pretty easy to rent dyno space. So for convenience, I would choose renting a dyno. Obviously with the street, it makes it a little bit easier if you don't have access to a dyno shop, but with the street, you're also juggling a laptop in the passenger seat while trying to fight traffic with a lot of other liabilities. Yeah, that's true. I have a lot of customers that are in the Midwest and things are just naturally more spaced out. Tampa's not bad for dyno shops, by the way. Uh -oh. But uh, in the Midwest where things are more spaced out, I have guys that are driving two, four, six hours to get dyno time in. And sometimes, you know, the dyno session doesn't go that well and it's kind of a massive waste and they're trailering cars and doing all this crazy stuff. So I think street tuning can be a little bit more convenient, but there is downsides to it. So the laptop scanning is one, you know, the, it's all, you slam on the brakes and it flies against the dashboard and your hard drive crashes and all that kind of stuff. But then also something that a lot of people don't think about is getting wide bands in the cars. So when you're on the street, you're, you're kind of stuck. If it's a really low car, you have to usually use the tailpipe, which is what we try not to do. We try to get it in a secondary. So that's kind of an issue sometimes, trying to get wide bands in there. I actually used a trailer recently to put O2 sensors in. We took the car halfway off the trailer, put the O2 sensor in, took it the rest of the way off. But I think it's more convenient from the sense I can literally just walk outside and immediately start doing the tuning versus like scheduling, uh, commuting at that point and stuff like that, getting hooked up. So I think street tuning is a little bit more convenient. Agree to disagree. Dyno. I don't even think we're going to disagree on that one. I mean, the dyno is going to tell you the horsepower and the torque the car is making. Now, something that people have to realize that we explain to a lot of people is those dynos are only so accurate. And so a lot of people get really hung up on their car not making a specific power number. And if you oftentimes go to the same dyno, same model dyno in the same city on the same day, you'll get slightly different readings. These aren't perfect machines at the end of the day. There's a little bit of variance in a lot of things. And so the things they are good at though, while peak numbers may not be like the most accurate, they're always great at measuring improvement. So if you use the same dyno um, from before and after modifications, it's gonna show you power improvement. And that's really the purpose of why we use dynos is one, all the things we've talked about, they're safe and they're easy to do certain tests, but two, it's gonna show us very accurate improvement numbers over peak numbers. We don't get too hung up on those, but yeah, I mean, I think the dyno is obviously the best way to do this. Yeah, I would say dyno is the best way to do it, and like Brett said, you can have the same, let's take a Mustang Dyno 1100 as a model, for example. Um, I've uh, had one before in the past, and I've had friends that have owned one in the same city. Um, the way that our weather stations are set up, the way that the correction factors are set up, the way that they load the dyno, all changes the number figure. The only reason why you would focus on a number is, like he said, the point to point, the change from the beginning to the end. On the street, there's no really effective way to do that. Yeah. Um, obviously, we have different calculations that we can use via HP tuners for our torque and horsepower numbers, but they aren't as accurate as if we use a dyno. Absolutely. So now that we've run through all of these scenarios, we talked about all these different things, you're at home probably wondering what should you do? And I have an answer for you. In my opinion, you should do both. You should do street tuning and dyno tuning. I know a lot of guys watching this video are just starting out. You haven't tuned very many cars or you haven't tuned any cars yet. And most people don't have the type of backing when they start tuning to immediately buy a dyno. Some guys do, and that's awesome if you can, but a lot of guys aren't gonna start out that way. They're gonna start tuning their own car, then they'll tune their buddy's car, and then before they know it, they're the guy in town that does good tunes. And so you're gonna to wanna to start on the street, but when you start on the street, it's super important that you're very careful. Your entire 
tuning career could be ruined with one accident or one ticket or you name it. So you always wanna be super careful when you're doing that street stuff. Remember, you wanna do all your wide open throttle stuff at a drag strip because that's the safest place to do it. And your customer will appreciate that of you when you're not taking their car into dangerous conditions on the street, you're just doing it at a closed course. So once you've gotten through your street tuning, you start to become a reputable tuner, you start to make a little bit of money at this, I always suggest guys get a dyno. A dyno is an amazing tool to have and it just makes you look more professional all the way around. Uh, customers want to take their cars to a dyno shop. They want to put it on a dyno. People will pay you more if you have a dyno. So normally I say at some point, if you want to pursue this professionally, move to look at buying a dyno. That's going to be a really important thing to do. Yeah. I even recommend a lot of the experienced tuners that I know, including me and several of the instructors at the tuning school, still utilize street tuning at the end of every dyno tune. There's no way that I can practice stopping at a stoplight, turning the wheels so the power steering pump is putting a strain on the engine and everything like that on a dyno. So I always recommend using your dyno first to knock out your uh, partial throttle tuning, wide open throttle tuning, and then go to the street just to verify drivability. Never do any wide open throttle tuning on the street as it's very unsafe and it's highly illegal. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great point because it's the worst feeling in the world where you finish a tune on a car and it runs great, makes an awesome power number, the customer's super happy, you unstrap it and he's back in 10 minutes because it's not staying running on the street or whatever it's doing. And so it's always a good idea to drive it on the street. We normally even suggest guys keep it overnight so you can do that cold start the next yes. morning. So that customer, while he might be frustrated his car has to be there that long, he's gonna be more happy not having to bring it back than to bring it back with issues. So at the end of the day, utilize both things, even if you own a dyno. We hope this video provided some insight on street tuning versus dyno tuning. Be sure to follow us on social media and check out our website at thetuningschool.com. And as always, stay tuned. I'll play bug play. Y'all wanna do some street tuning? Woo! Is it okay if I'm crying from laughing? <laughs> Be sure to check out our website at thetuningschool.com. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And as always, stay tuned. <laughs>